Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to talk about a few data structures in C. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about dynamic memory allocation with arrays, vectors, uh, and linked lists. Uh, now that we've gone through uh, so many lectures, we are getting to the point where maybe this is no longer the intro to C programming class, but now you're actually getting into just a C programming class, and we're getting close to being able to move up uh, if you want to do some more sophisticated programming at a little bit of higher level uh, of programming in C++, which is an object-oriented language, whereas C uh, is not an object-oriented language. It just has uh, structures, but we could kind of simulate the same thing that we have with objects. Uh, there's a little bit different that goes on underneath the scene. However, uh, we have structures which contain variables. They're all public, which means we have access to them anywhere, but we could have functions that operate on that data, and that's where the data structures uh, come into play is that it's gonna, not going to be anything more than just uh, some logical arrangement of variables such that we can then have functions that operate on that data. We've already used this in arrays um, and uh, we've used different functions and passed arrays into them and made them do things even. Uh, a data structure is nothing more than just one or more variables that are somehow logically related to each other. We usually have a set of functions also uh, to operate on that data and we've seen this with arrays already. Let's take a look at how we go about with dynamic memory allocation. Um, if we don't know how much memory an object is going to take up at compile time, we have to use a special function called malloc. Some of you may have learned, I think I mentioned this in one of the previous lectures of using the new operator. Uh, malloc uh, stands for memory allocation. It works in a very similar manner. Uh, certain compilers don't allow you to use new. Um, the C++ compilers, if you're compiling your code, uh, your C code with a C++ compiler, new is going to probably work just fine. malloc is going to be uh, more of the C way of allocating memory uh, at runtime. What we do is you see down here that I've created a pointer. I made it a void star pointer so that we can allocate it as whatever type that we want. My pointer then is set equal to this function called malloc. And how much space do I need for that? Well, I need the size of a struct card. So this is a function called size of. It's going to return to us the number of bytes that is in this type of a variable, in this case, a struct card. So somewhere in my code, uh, I have a structure uh, named card. And uh, however many variables I have inside of that is going to determine the number of bytes, which is returned from the size of function. It's then going to allocate that much memory, however many bytes I have based on the variables inside of that structure. Um, it's going to allocate that much memory to me and then allow have my pointer pointing to that location of memory where all of that space has been allocated. I can then use uh, inside of these where I have this dot, 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 I can use that space uh, in memory. It's now been allocated to me. I don't need to worry about um, a segmentation fault or a bus error uh, if I try to access some area of memory that has not been uh, utilized as long as it's within uh, these uh, the size that I have specified here with my pointer variable. At the end of this, if you use malloc, you have to make sure that you free that space up. This is how you can have memory leaks in your program. If you have a program which is going to be running for an extended period of time, it's extremely important that you free up uh, any space that you allocate with the malloc function. Otherwise, you're going to have a memory leak and your program is just going to slowly creep up and use more and more and more and more memory until eventually you run out and your program will crash. So it's important that whenever you allocate memory using the malloc function that you have to free it somewhere else uh, after you're done using it in your code. Okay, here is uh, an example of allocating memory with an array. So you can see line five, I've created an int pointer called my pointer. Line six, I have uh, just a variable i and then the number of elements. I prompt the user, how many elements do we have in the array? I then read it in from the user using the scanf function. So they can enter as many elements as they want. Uh, now, I haven't allocated my array yet. So now line 10 is where I'm using that malloc function. So I'm gonna dynamically allocate my array. Uh, malloc returns a void star, so I'm going to have to typecast it. You see I've typecast it to an int pointer here, an int star. So I allocate it as the number of elements that the user typed in times the size of an integer. This is how many elements now are going to be available to me in my array, specified as this pointer, my underscore ptr. Then I just go through and I populate my array or my uh, uh, my array here, which is pointed to by this pointer variable. I'm using array notation here. It's a little dangerous because this variable is actually a pointer. However, I know that it's been allocated as an array, so I'm okay using it that way. Uh, go up to the number of elements, and I just assign a value into each one of those elements. 
print it all back out, make sure that it works, and then line 17, make sure that you free up the space that you have dynamically allocated. What this allows us to do now is to be able to create an array and dynamically determine at runtime how many elements we are going to have in that array. We don't have to uh, specify that we have a thousand elements until the user selects the number between zero and 999 or zero and a thousand. Instead, we can just say how many elements are there and we're gonna dynamically allocate that many elements uh, to this variable without having to have extra space. Because let's say we have an array with 1,000 uh, uh, elements in it and the user says, I need 10. Well, now we're just using a lot more memory in our program than we really need to. So it's a better idea to uh, use dynamic memory allocation using that malloc function. Okay, so an array is one data structure that we've already learned and you've uh, been using uh, throughout uh, however many uh, programs we've written so far. A vector is another um, data structure. It's very related to an array, which is why I am covering it next. Uh, a vector is a dynamically allocated array that allows the array to grow as space is needed. So we don't need to limit ourselves and say we can only have 10 elements in this array, but instead, once we reach 10 elements, the vector is automatically going to grow the array and make it bigger so that we can continue adding elements into it. And we don't even have to know this. The vector hides this in the underlying implementation of it, which I'll show you here uh, on the next slide. The size of the vector is the number of elements that are currently in the vector. The capacity, on the other hand, is the number of elements that we can add to the vector before it's going to have to increase uh, the total number of elements that we have. Generally, the capacity is going to increase when the size equals the capacity, so it's not going to increase early. It's going to wait until you've inserted the capacity number of elements into your vector, and then it's going to increase. Typically, it's going to double, so if you started off with 10 uh, a capacity of 10 when you finally added your 10th element into your vector it's going to grow to size 20 dynamically grow uh, to twice that size okay so here is an example uh, using a vector so I'm going to walk through uh, some of this uh, make sure that you understand this this is going to be important for you to understand uh, what is going on in this code so uh, right here line 4 you see I'm creating a structure I've done it using type def uh, it's named vector and inside of it, you see I have the size variable, the capacity variable, and this is going to be an integer vector. So here's my int array, uh, star ARR. Uh, this is where I'm going to hold all of the values of the array, and size is going to be how many elements do I have currently in there, capacity is how many elements uh, can I have before I need to grow uh, the vector. Okay, inside of my main function now, you see here is my uh, integer. I've just created an integer i. Here is my structure. Uh, the instance of my structure I've named my vect. Now initially my size is zero and I've set my capacity to uh, be zero also. So they're both zero to start. Um, and then I am going to start going through and adding elements into it. I'm going to add 25 elements just so that we can see how uh, this is going to increase in size. So I'm going to loop 25 times. You see I'm calling a function insert. Uh, here is um, Okay, so I'm passing i, which is going to be uh, the, the element, the, the value that I would like inserted into my uh, vector. And then I'm passing uh, the address of my vec. The reason I'm passing the address is because inside of my insert function, you see that it's taking a pointer. And the pointer contains an address, so it's passing an address into this pointer variable that I have here, v. Now you see, the first time I come in here, the size of this variable v is going to be zero. So this if statement, if v arrow size equals zero, it does. Remember, the reason I'm using the arrow notation here for my structure is because it's a pointer. So I could have said star v dot size, that would work also, but this pointer notation is a little bit of a shortcut for us. It dereferences this variable v and then grabs the size variable out of it. So v arrow size is going to be referring to the size variable that's inside of my vector v pointed to by this uh, pointer. So if the size is zero, which is going to be initially, I'm going to uh, make my capacity equal to 10. So that's going to be my initial capacity will be 10. And you see that I'm dynamically allocating uh, my V arrow ARR, I'm dynamically allocating it here using the malloc function to whatever the capacity is times the size of an integer. So it's going to make it 10 times the size of an integer, four bytes on um, a 32-bit operating system. So this will be uh, 40 bytes that are going to be allocated to this variable ARR. Then 
I say, if V arrow size equals the capacity minus one, well, this is where I'm getting up there. If I've added so many elements that I need to now grow the size of the underlying array that I have inside of my vector, I'm gonna get inside of here. Initially, I'm not gonna do that. Actually, I'm not gonna get up to that point until I've added my ninth element into my uh, vector. So I'm not gonna get into here for a little while. Down here now, uh, so after that, so I'm not gonna get into that the first time, then I just say V arrow uh, ARR, sub V arrow size, well that's zero at this point, is gonna get whatever value was passed in as the first parameter num, and you see I increment my size then because now I've added an element into my array. So I just continue calling this insert function over and over and over again. Your size is gonna continue increasing each time that you do it. Your capacity is gonna stay the same until you get up to adding your ninth element into it. When we get up to that point where we've added our ninth element into it, and now we're adding our 10th element. So when we, after we've already added nine elements, now we're adding our 10th one. We're going to be up here where my size is going to be nine because I'm adding my 10th one right now. My capacity being 10 minus one is going to be nine. Now I'm gonna get inside of this. Now what am I doing in here? This is really interesting. A vector is not a very sophisticated data structure, but it's a really, really useful and efficient one. It's one that we use very frequently because we don't need to worry about the size of the array. It's dynamically going to do this for us. So here, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna create a temp pointer, and I'm gonna allocate it to be the same size as the current array that I have, okay? So this is just gonna be an array. I'm gonna copy all of the elements out of my current uh, array that's inside of my vector into this temp array. So I just copy all the elements right out of it. I'm then going to double my capacity and then reallocate my array to the, my new capacity, which is twice what the previous one was. Now, when I reallocate this using malloc, what happens is I'm gonna get a completely different location in memory. This is why I needed to copy all of my elements out of my array into my temp array before I reallocated uh, my array using this malloc function. So now it's all going to be in this V arrow ARR and it's gonna be twice as big as it was before because now I'm saying malloc me, uh, allocate this much memory to me, which is twice the size that it was before and then copy everything from my temp array back into my original array. That's it. And then down here, I'm still going to do this exact same thing of uh, adding the one element into it and increasing my size. So this is gonna happen the first time this is gonna happen is when I get to my 10th element, then it's gonna happen when I get to my uh, 20th element, then it's gonna happen when I get to my 40th element, and then to my 80th element, and so on, because I continue doubling my capacity right here on line 21. Um, and then what you see here at the end, I'm just printing out all of the elements that are inside of my array. Something to point note about a vector is that it is not quite as efficient as just using an array. If you know exactly how many elements you need to have in your array, it's going to be much better for you to just allocate that many elements in your array. Uh, because when you have to dynamically increase the number of elements in your underlying array uh, from your vector, you're gonna have a little bit of a performance hit because it has to allocate that new space, copy all the elements over into it, copy the elements back after it creates this new array, uh, and so there's a little bit of a memory hit that goes on there. Um, so if you know how many elements you're gonna need, then it's better to just utilize an array and specify the number of elements that you're gonna have. If you don't know, a vector is a very, very useful data structure that you can use, and it's very commonly used uh, in uh, programming. Okay, our next data structure we're gonna talk about is a linked list, just two slides on that. Uh, a linked list is a linear collection of self-referential structures, okay? Kind of a, a big term, that's just the definition of it. They're called nodes. They're connected by pointer links. Um, unlike an array, we don't have random access to the nodes of a linked list. In an array, we could go to element seven inside of our array because we had random access to it. With a linked list, we don't have random access. Uh, we're gonna have to iterate through the entire list to get to the individual elements. Look at the code that I have here. So there is my struct node. You see that it consists of two things, which is the data and a pointer to another node. The way that we typically draw this out is something like this. This is going to be my data on my first part. This is going to point to my next node here as the second part. Um, oh, let me make this a little bit bigger so that you can uh, see this better. Okay. 
So there's my data and my next node. Now the next node, we usually draw it like this, even though it's actually stored inside of that little element there, but we don't wanna make it smaller and smaller as we draw more of them. So then here's my data for the next one, and then this points to my next node also. When I get to the very end, next node is going to point to null. I'm just not gonna have any data in there, so it points to null. Now, the first element here, the way that we get access into our linked list is by that struct linked list you see down there at the bottom, and all we have is a pointer to that first element called start node. That points to the first element, that one points to the next one, which points to the next one, which points to the next one, and we have this list of nodes, and we can have as many elements as we want in there. We're limited based on memory here, because uh, we've never specified how many elements we actually have in the list. So we don't have a certain number of elements. We can add them at any time. If I wanted to add a node, all I would do is create a brand new one here with data, set my next node uh, pointing at null, and then point my next node from my last one pointing to uh, my new node. And so I've added an element in there. It only takes about three steps to do that. And I can have as many elements inside of my linked list uh, based on the memory that I use inside of my program. So uh, it's a neat data structure. Uh, we don't have to specify the size of it ahead of time. Uh, one drawback that we have, and it depends on your application, maybe it's not a drawback if you don't need this anyways, is that we have to access it through the start node and we have to go through uh, our list sequentially. There are uh, some more sophisticated linked lists. I'm not gonna go through uh, all of them here. There are doubly linked lists where you have, uh, this node will also point back to the previous node. You can also have an end node pointer so that you can insert very quickly, uh, being able to access the last node without having to iterate through all of them to find out the one that points at null and then say, oh, that's the end of my linked list. So there are a few little uh, 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 intelligent changes that you could put into a linked list to make it a little bit more uh, efficient than the singly linked list that I have drawn up here uh, on the board behind me. Let me show you the implementation of a singly linked list though. Um, so you see that I have my uh, node data structure right here, and then I have my uh, uh, linked list data structure right here on lines nine through 11. So I have this data structure called linked list. I then have this um, structure called node. So I've just done the type desk differently so that you can see the two ways that we can type def uh, structures. Okay, uh, the insert function, similar to the insert function for a uh, for, a, for, for the vector, we take the data as the first element and then we take a pointer to the linked list uh, as the second element. Here's my main function, let's walk through it. So line 41, I create an instance of a linked list. I set the start node equal to null because I have no data in it so far. And then I'm gonna insert 10 elements into it, calling that insert function 10 times, passing in a different value from zero through nine, and then pass my uh, LL, the address of it, since that function takes a pointer as a parameter and the value of a pointer is an address. Okay, so here, uh, line 14, if the list arrow start node is equal to null, which it will be the very first time when I'm trying to insert the number zero into it, it's gonna say, let's allocate um, that start node using malloc to the size of a node. So the size of a node is going to be an integer, which is four bytes, uh, and uh, however much the next node uh, consists of. And then uh, the start node arrow data is going to get my num and start node arrow next node gets null. So list arrow start node arrow data. So list arrow start node is going to be a node. What do we have inside of a node? Well, we have data and next node. So I've set the data equal to the num that was passed in. I set next node equal to null because that's the only element that I have in my linked list at that point. I'll skip over my else. Uh, the first time through. The second time now when I'm inserting the number one in here, now I have uh, a node with the value zero as my start node. So when I come in here, start node is not going to be null. So I come down to my else, and um, first of all, I get my start node in this node in, and then I say while in arrow next node does not equal null, continue iterating through. What this is doing is what I had back here is it's gonna go from here to here to here to here to here and it's gonna go all the way down until it finds that last node. The last node is what we need to find and that's what I'm looking for here with my in. As soon as I get to where in's next node is equal to null, it's gonna break out of here and I know that in is my last node. That's my current last node. I'm gonna create then, once I get to that point, a new node. Allocate it using malloc 
set the data equal to num, set my next node to null because it's going to become my new last node. And then I say in arrow next node because in was my last node is now going to be set equal to new node. And so that's then going to add my uh, the node that I just created to the end of my list. That's really all that there is to a linked list. You could create a delete function or a remove function here. Um, you can look at my print link list function that I have up here also. It's just iterating through all of the nodes that I have and printing out the values and then going to the next node. Uh, neat little function there. It doesn't, I mean, it's not real sophisticated, but you can hopefully follow along with what it's doing, how I'm printing it out. Uh, I think a good example for you to uh, see if you understand link lists and vectors would be to write the uh, delete or remove function for each of these uh, sections of code that I've written here in the slides. That would be a good example uh, to figure out that you understand these and that you can uh, remove elements uh, from each one of those lists, which is an essential function. I've just left them out of the code that I've provided here. Okay, um, <clears throat> let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.